Hans, it's a pleasure to have you here. Same here, and thanks for the, uh, for the invitation. So we had the academicians, we had the entrepreneurs, the executives, and the one component that I'm missing was the executive recruiter. I knew you wouldn't be far behind. <laughs> so it's a pleasure to have you here again. Thanks again. Um, I wanted to get your perspective on the current talent pool since you are in the energy capital of the world. You focus on energy sector and the recruitment for them. Um, I, I asked this question earlier also to uh, other panelists that in the last decade or so, the focus has been so much on core IT that the students coming out are you know, obviously geared for that particular industry. So how is this industry trying to you know, address the issue of finding the right talent pool? That's, that's a very good question. That's a concern that a lot of our clients are going through and they're facing. I mean, you think about, and again, I'll, I'll focus my answer more around the oil and gas uh, within sure. the energy, sure. uh, although it, it may translate into other industries. But you look at the talent gap that exists today is a major concern for all of our clients. You think about um, folks that are mid-level stage in career as well as late stage in career, uh, and it's that huge gap in between the 15 to 25 plus career experienced individual. That's where our clients are finding, uh, finding difficult to find individuals. One of the things that we're seeing thanks to that is a a, our clients are taking a leap of faith, a leap of faith on bringing that younger talent and allowing them to take challenges within, within, uh, w within their organization. So they're not only internally promoting younger talent, they're also externally looking for talent to meet that gap. Um, and you'll see, again, one of the trends you're seeing in today is, is when you look at certain CEOs that have been put in place, um, you know, mid-stage career professionals that are today CEOs of large corporations. It's, it's, and again, that's one of the, the trends that we're seeing thanks to that talent gap. So when you go out and look for the right candidates, um, are there relationships that people like you are building with schools? We're talking about graduate schools. Are there relationships you're building with other uh, big major corporations who want to switch careers and come to this side? Where do you think, I mean, you have to go and attract the right. talent from some whatever available resources that you have at your disposal. Right, so again, the, the, the relationships and the network you build is throughout the years. It's not something that happens from, from day one. Uh, because of the, the senior executive level, or, or the, that's the area where we play in, most of our relationships are within those senior executives at some of these the larger companies. We do have uh, relationships at the, uh, with uh, academic institutions, but it's really more around them as a client, potentially helping them on search but not necessarily from the standpoint of new recruits coming out. Uh, we do hope that those recruits would at some point be at our, our target level. Uh, when you talk about mid-level career managers, um, increasingly I think the talent pool is diversified. Um, what similarities and what are the challenges you see when you work with these cultures? Very, very good question. And again, I was mentioning one of the panels earlier is the importance of thinking about competencies when you're, when you're thinking about the candidate pool that are coming in. There, at Russell Reynolds, we have a number of competencies. You think about leading teams, uh, business acumen, strategic thinking. Uh, what I would say are, are predominantly becoming more important is cultural fit and collaboration. And within cultural fit, you'll have, uh, again, how does um, one individual fit in well in a global environment? To answer your question, uh, we have worked with um, foreign companies coming into the U.S., recruiting U.S., so we've had experience in dealing with Indians, the Chinese, trying to build uh, uh, um, uh, their, their talent pool here in the U.S., and we've done vice versa, right, helping uh, Korean companies as well as, as Indian companies in their own countries. What I would say is there are nuances around working with each one. Um, I would say there are challenges around communication. That's, that's one big one when you're, when you're discussing uh, with your Chinese counterparts, sort of discussing the talent, discussing the market insights. Um, from the talent pool itself, uh, there are nuances about how they go about networking and how they go about delivering their performance. So, so you'll pick up on those nuances as, as soon as you know where that, that individual's coming from. Thank you for sharing the uh, great experience and the thoughts. I appreciate you coming here. No problem. Thank you. Thanks for having us here.